Hey, what's up guys, j Sense here. And if you recall, I said that my GPU loop kept getting hotter and hotter and hotter, all the way up to in the low 60s, when not even overclocked. And I started to suspect that something might have been happening inside the blocks, uh, the GPU loop to see if maybe they were clogging or something. So I decided today, just for the sake of teaching you guys how to take the block apart, we're gonna show you how to do some block maintenance, how to clean your block and actually see what's going on in here. I, I don't think the block is clogged at all, but I still want to at least open it up and see what the heck is going on inside of there. With its specifically tuned copper base and maintenance-free plug-and-play operation, the EVGA 980Ti Hybrid offers ultra-fast gaming performance at the lowest temperatures possible. Click the link in the description for more details. Now the block I'm specifically using here, which is a little bit dusty, uh, this is the EK Water Blocks full cover block. It is the nickel and acetal. The reason why they call it that is because the block is made of nickel, nickel plated copper anyway. And then we've got an acetal cover on here. Uh, but as you can see, it's not actually nickel all the way end to end, which a lot of people thought that they were. They're not, they're actually just this portion here, which is the same as, you know, the nickel plexi, only they add the acetal cover here. Now to take the thing apart, uh, you are going to need an Allen key. This is actually included with the block. So if you have the block, then you should already have the key. And you're gonna work your way around and undo all of these uh, screws right here. And then you're also gonna undo the three at the end of the port. Now, one of the reasons why I want to inspect this is if you take a look here, I was getting this gunk that was actually building up on all of my fittings. And you can actually see that. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. So you can actually see that there is a little bit of a kind of a white gunk that's been building up inside of there. And I'm just curious if that's been making its way into my block. It's a little bit here on the end of the fitting. And then I also put up a picture here of what was happening to some of the ends of my rigid tube. I don't think there's gonna actually be any buildup in here, but for the sake of this video and the fact that I changed all the blocks, I at least wanna see what the heck is going on in there. Now, when you undo the third screw here, the thing might swing away as you can see. You wanna be careful because right here, there are two very small O-rings, actually more like oval rings. There's something on there. Two very small oval rings uh, that are creating a seal against the actual block right here. So you definitely don't want to lose that. But as you can see, we have a little bit more of that white. It's almost like a powder. It's almost like a salt. And I'll explain why I think that in a minute. I found a very interesting post on uh, Overclock forums or overclock.net. But anyway, you don't want to lose those O-rings. Be very mindful of that. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind too is this is going to void your warranty. There is a warranty sticker right here between the two components. When you take it apart, it will break that, which is going to violate your warranty. Um, so definitely something you need to do at your own risk. But yeah, anyway, we'll just work our way around and undo all of these screws. Now, I pretty much expect whatever is inside this block to be the same for all three. Uh, all three are going to need to be clean, so I will end up opening up all three. Um, but like I said, this is just more out of curiosity as to what the inside of the block looked like, considering uh, I was seeing that buildup on some of the tubes there. I don't know why I was getting this buildup. A lot of people um, don't have this problem. Few people have had this problem. Uh, so it's, it's almost like a 50-50. It it's just depends on the components. It depends on a lot of different variables. Um, I don't think color matters. You know, because there there's a lot of dye that actually creates these different pigments that is used with the pastel fluids. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Uh, but technically the white has no dye because that is the base coolant. It's just a white, uh, like dragonized fluid. All right, so we've got all of those loose. And, well, you know, it's, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, quite honestly. Um, you can see here the O-ring does have uh, pretty much a coating of that white, again, it's like a, I don't know if you can see it, it's like a powder. It really is, where the hell is the focus? It really is like a powder. When you touch it, it's very tacky. The micro channels here don't appear to be clogged up. Although, no, they don't appear to be clogged up. They've also got this little plate that goes on there to kind of direct the water flow through it either direction. Uh, but I, all I pretty much need to do at this point is take out the O-ring, clean the o-ring, clean off the gunk that's built up right here on the... So you can see when I rub it, it's just kind of like... There's quite a bit of powder built up right here. Again, I think this is salt, and I'll explain why I think that's the case in a minute. But I don't believe this to be the reason for 
my high coolant temperatures. Um, although when I touch it, everything is sticky. Everything is sticky right here in the micro channels. So it definitely is going to need a, a, a pretty thorough cleaning to make sure that you know there's no issues there. But one of the other reasons why I wanted to look inside here was to kind of see how the plating was holding up against the uh, nano fluid here. There has been issues in the past where some coolants can start to eat away at nickel plating, and I want to make sure that that wasn't the case. I didn't think it would be, um, but yeah. The inside really all in all is not that bad at all. I mean, you can see against the black here, there's quite a bit of crud building up. You can see right there, that's where it was kind of collecting, obviously. Okay, for cleaning, we're just gonna start with alcohol. Alcohol is a really good place to start. Um, I just kind of want to see how this stuff reacts to it. We'll just kind of wipe around the outside here. Yeah, and as you can see, let me get all these screws out of there. You obviously don't want to lose any of these screws either. Um, but alcohol is a pretty good place to start when it comes to cleaning. As you can see, it's wiping right off. You definitely want to make sure the spot where the O-ring seals um, is as clean as can be. That's kind of important part number one. But it doesn't look like there's any real massive buildup in here. I mean, it's a little bit more buildup than if I was using like distilled water, obviously. Distilled water has nothing to build up. But again, this does not appear to be the source of why my GPUs were getting pretty hot. All right, so in the end, this is what you're left with here. Uh, you just take your small O-ring here. Be gentle with this. It's actually very fragile, and you just kind of work it into the channel here. Definitely have to make sure that this thing is seated properly. Otherwise, uh, you are going to end up springing a leak. It's going to have a little bit of conformativity, if that's even a word. Uh, probably not a word. So you're going to want to make sure you kind of get this thing lined up in its original spot because it's going to kind of want to take to the shape that it's been at for a while. This might end up being one of the more frustrating points of you know, this particular process. Um, but ultimately, the nickel plating looks very good on the inside. Doesn't look like there's any tarnishing or any sort of flaking, which was one of the reasons I wanted to look inside of this thing. And unfortunately, it also does not look like um, the block having any sort of buildup is going to be the culprit for the temperatures that I had been trying to figure out, which is unfortunate. Anyway, we'll get this thing back together and then we'll talk about what I think the white stuff might be. All right, well, here it is put back together. I, I really didn't think that the pastel was going to be the problem. Uh, or I should say the nano fluid because really it's the nanoparticles that uh, I was thinking might have somehow been getting clogged. I doubted it though since they're extremely light and people haven't mentioned pastel clogging before. Uh, but anyway, when you put this back together, kind of do like the four corner screws first to hold it in place. Make sure that O-ring doesn't pop out. It's kind of difficult to work in there. Then put in the other screws real light and then work your way around and kind of tighten it up in a star pattern and, and then make sure it's tight. But remember, uh, it is easy to strip this, even the copper base. Copper is still a soft metal, so you want to make sure that you don't strip it, especially when you're putting the end piece back on because this is threading right into the acetal material and it's just a plastic. So it's going to strip really, really easily. It doesn't take a lot of force to make a good uh, seal with that O-ring. But anyway, I want to talk to you real quick about that... Uh, the white stuff and what it could possibly be. I, I really don't know. I'm not a chemist. Now, like I said, I'm not a chemist. You might be thinking, Jay, then how can you even talk about this? But I, I at least want to mention a post that I found on uh, overclock.net where, like I said, I'm assuming this guy's a chemist. He really seems to know <laughs> what he's talking about, at least that on the surface, it sounds like it. So the question was about, like I said, about the white, almost salty material that appears to be building up in here. And this guy said that uh, copper does oxidize rather quickly when exposed to an oxygen deprivation cell. At the same time, this isn't a pH problem so much as it is a contamination problem. The liquid is either partially or very reactive to copper salts, and the salts have high solubility. I'd say that that is a big problem no matter if the radiator is 100% clean prior to use, these salts would eventually build up. The question of whether or not this would be in a week or six months should not matter. Now this guy's name is Little Hasselhofer. Um, he's got 1,773 thanks received on the forum, so he seems to be pretty active. Apparently, the oxygen uh, deprivation cell, again, I have no idea what that is, um, is a contamination problem, and this has something to do, I guess, with the fluid, and it has to do with the way it's reacting to the copper, and considering I have copper radiators, could be 
that could be salt building up in the system. I don't know if that has something to do with why the fluid was changing color, but it wasn't building up inside the block, but as you saw, it was kind of building up on the, on the fittings and stuff. I've already cleaned that one off. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to put that out there too. Um, it is what it is. I, I'm officially saying I don't think the pastel has caused any of the temperature problems I was receiving with my Titan. So I've got to figure that one out. Maybe you guys learned something today from uh, how to take the block apart. Make sure you just don't over tighten. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to get these things sealed back up. Uh, but the best thing is no matter what happens in there, you can generally clean it unless the nickel starts to flake off. Uh, you can always get your blocks running like new again. You don't need to buy new blocks. I only went with the nickel plated um, plexi blocks so that they they looked cool. That's really all it was. It came down to the petty looking awesome. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. I hope this has helped you learn something. That's it. That's all I'm talking about with the pastel stuff. We moved forward. Um, I hope the Primo Chill stuff works out well for me, but time will tell. These are, these are things that take time to kind of present themselves. Anyway, the block wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, so that was a pleasant surprise. Got to clean the other two, and then I know we'll find a purpose for these. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, we will see you in the next video.